Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So I'm finally ready to drop the bomb and do a solvent versus waterborne paint review. I've been thinking about this video for a long time and I wanted to have a little bit more experience with the water base before I did actually go into making this review. But now I've been using Chromax Pro waterborne base coat for nearly six months so I'm ready to do this review. I've been doing a lot of thinking about it. I've asked guys at work and said, what's your take on it? So I've written down a list and then we'll have a winner on each criteria. First up, it's application time. Just keep in mind that I am referring to Chromax Pro, which is the same as Spees Hacker and Stando Blue. And it is applied in a one and a half coat application method. However, there are some waterborne paints and water-based paints out there that don't cover quite so well and must be applied differently. Okay, so we've got one on the board there for water. Next up is prep work. I've found in my experience anyway, you can go a little bit coarser with the sanding grades when you're using solvent based paints. I'm not gonna go on about this one too much, but we'll just get one on the board there for solvent. Next up is shrink back, something that anybody who's used solvent based paint will probably be fairly familiar with. And if you get one of those Honda spare wheel covers, you just cringe at the sight of it because as soon as you cut through with them, you'll get fry ups and shrink backs and it'll be a real pain in the ass to fix. There actually are some products on the market. There's a good one called Upol Barcode. Yet to use it, but my mate Clint from here in Perth recommends it and swears by it. So there are ways around it. But sometimes it'll just come out of the middle of nowhere and get you when you least expect it. So water is going to be winning on that one, hands down, absolutely. Because the amount of solvent or thinners that is in that paint is so minimal that there is little to no chance of it actually frying up on you. While we're on that topic, I thought I might let you guys know the difference between waterborne and water-based paints. So waterborne paints do actually still contain a little bit of solvent in there. I've been told that Chromax Pro has around 11 or 12% solvents in there. So basically what it means is that when it is dry, you will not be able to wash it off with a wet rag. So a damp rag of water, you will not be able to wash the waterborne paints off. However, if it's a water-based paint, you will be able to wash that off once it's actually dried with a damp cloth of water. Next up, we've got another one for solvent to take out, and that is the price. You'll be paying around 15 to 20% more for most waterborne or water-based paints. That's from what I know anyway. Next up, we've got film thicknesses or film build. So you will be left with a less overall film build or film thickness using Axelta's waterborne paint than any solvent I've ever used. Now this is coming hand in hand to the prep work. So this is the reason you must actually be a bit more on point with the prep work when you're using water. So it's basically that you're putting more material on there and you're left with actually a bit more base coat still there once you've finished painting it. The reason this is actually better is because you really don't want too much paint on your car. Some people just go and smash two heavy coats of uh, VOC clear or high solid clear onto a car and they think that they're doing a great job because it looks really nice and it's got a glass finish on it. But that's not what I want if I've got a brand new Merc. I want that painted to the OEM finish that is on that car. I don't want you to go and put way too much clear coat on there or base coat on there. If you've got too much solvent based base coat on a car also, you'll find that you'll lose a bit of gloss after a bake or even just over time. If you don't bake it and you just leave it a week or something like that, you'll probably find you lose a bit of gloss out of it. And that can be partly to do with the solvents, not 100% out of that base coat but then you go and clear it and they're releasing and then it'll sort of uh, die back a little bit. Which takes us to our next point, which is overall finish quality. And that's one that hands down, water is going to win because you will be left with a superior gloss level and less chance of any of those shrink backs, any uh, sort of paint defects maybe coming back. So water's gonna be winning for that one. That's not to say that you can't get some really good finishes with solvent because you absolutely can, but it's a bit more sensitive to the substrate that you're going over the top of. So if you've got a few cut throughs and it's been done a few times before, you may be in a bit of danger territory when you're using solvent, whereas water, you're probably a bit more safer. Next point's gonna be another one for water and that's gonna be the environmental impact and waterborne paint is obviously gonna have less emissions coming out of it than any solvent-based paints. 
So the thinners that you're putting into your solvent-based paints are going to evaporate out. They are emissions and they're not good for the environment. Now your clear coats and your primers will all stay the same when you are using waterborne or solvent-based paints. But these days with the two-pack paints, they will actually dry through the chemical reaction of the hardeners into the paints. So there's a lot less emissions than what there was with any of the old acrylic paints. With high solid and low VOC paints widely used, especially in places like California and across America, the emissions are gonna be a lot lower and the solid contents in those paints are obviously a lot higher. So you'll be left with a greater film build without having to put so much product on the car. So in case you didn't already notice, this car that I painted here was a VE Commodore wagon and I painted it in the Chromax Pro Waterborne. Now next Next up is drying times. That's going to be one where solvent definitely wins out. If this was a solvent based job, I would not have to use these air blowers. I've actually just received these air blowers, both of them. The one on the stand is a Devilbus one and the a &I one is obviously just a handheld one. More useful for smaller jobs like a bumper bar or smaller areas. You can move around that bumper bar a bit easier rather than having to set that stand up on all these different angles. Before I got these blowers that you see me using here, I was just using what we call a duck's bill. So that's basically just a piece of plastic, a yellow piece of plastic on the end of an air fitting. It's got a few holes in it and it will spread the air that comes out of the airline. So it won't actually draw in any air from the spray booth, whereas uh, those blowers that you were seeing me using there, they will actually draw in air from the spray booth and you will have an increased airflow over the panel. So they definitely do help that waterborne base coat dry a lot quicker. And I always felt like I was wasting time standing there with an air blower in my hand. So with that developer stand I've got now, I just set it up, walk out, clean the guns out, come back in and clear it. So solvent definitely wins for drying times. Now next up, we're gonna have to give water another one and that is because because coverage is much better. You'll be able to use one and a half coats on most colors. Yes, there are a few that cover a little bit worse, but I've found that most of them are extremely good. So you do get a few yellows. Some of those silvers, the, the core silvers don't cover too well. You may have to put an extra coat on, but most of the time you're pretty right using the one and a half coats, which is recommended by Axelta's training reps. So next up, we've got versatility. Now this is one that solvent is going to have to take out. So if you're in the workshop, in a busy workshop, and you just need to flick a bit of a door jam in or something like that, it's a lot easier to do with solvent. Especially if it's in the middle of winter, it can be an absolute pain in the ass and just about impossible. You really wouldn't bother even trying to paint anything in the workshop, even if you've got prep bays or something like that. If you wanted an apprentice to um, puff in even just like a rad support or something like that, something that's not even seen. It doesn't matter if it gets a couple of bits of dust in. It's really not even worth the headache of trying to paint out in the workshop with waterborne, especially in the colder month. It's just gonna be an absolute nightmare and take forever to dry. So solvent's definitely gonna win on drying time. I'm actually yet to use any waterborne paints in the summer, so it does get quite a hot over here in Australia, especially in Western Australia. So it may actually get to the point in the middle of summer when we need a rad support or a back panel paint in the workshop and we've got the booth busy we may be able to do that in summer but at this point in time at this time of the year it's just not worth it which takes us to our next point and that is DIY hobbyists or those kind of people that paint their cars and paint things at home solvent is definitely going to be winning for you guys you'd probably sooner deal with the possibility of a bit of a fry up or a bit of a shrink back than the headache that you will have with the drying times using waterborne. So there you go, DIY guys. If you do have an option to use solvent, I know not everybody does due to the regulations of the area that you're in, but if possible, go for solvent, DIY home and hobbyist guys. Next up is custom paint. And as far as I know, there isn't really any waterborne custom base coats. I could be totally wrong, but from my knowledge, there is none on the market. So solvent is going to have to win there on the custom paint. All candies that I've ever seen or heard of are going to be solvent-based paint. So we've got another one on the board there for solvent. Next up is going to be the last point that I will cover, and it is the overall procedure required to get an everyday refinishing job done. I've found it takes a little bit longer to get a waterborne job done. Main reason being that you have to use wet on wet primers on just about everything, even over the areas that you've blocked, over new panels, over new bumper bars, new bonnets, new boot lids, new doors, 
prepped up panels, whereas previously I would save a little bit of material and time in not having to do that. Now the main reason that I do use the wet on wet primers over just about everything is because if you've got bare steel and you put water over the top of that, there's a possibility of having that rust down the line. Now, I know it's not recommended to do with solvent base, but you can do it. If you've got a tiny little cut through on an edge with solvent, I wouldn't really think twice about painting over it. I would be worried about a bit of rust coming through and also getting those sanding scratches, especially if it's over an area that you've blocked and you may just have missed one of those deeper scratches from the 240 or the 180 grit or whatever you did end up blocking it down with. So as you can see there, we've got six on the board for water, we've got seven on the board there for solvent. Now that's not to say that I prefer spraying solvent over water by any means. I'm happy spraying either. They've both got their pros and cons, and I would imagine that if I went back to spraying solvent again, I would most likely miss spraying water. So you may also say that, well, you know what, environment, give that two points, you know, because environment is extremely important, especially when used on a commercial basis like what we do. And at the end of the day, the customer does end up paying for the paint bill because they are the ones that pay for their insurance, who then the insurance will pay us to do the job. So you may be able to scrub cost off and then for you, water will win. There is certain shops that I would definitely say you're best off using water in, Certain other shops I might say, maybe go for solvent. I'm interested on what you guys think on this topic. It's definitely an interesting one. Be sure to leave a comment below. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.